We're going to take a closer look at the roots of a quadratic equation. And we've mentioned it before, but the roots of a quadratic equation, are, it's, it's another word for saying the solutions of a quadratic equation. Okay, so the roots of a quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. And remember that we say that this equation is in standard form. Okay, the ax squared plus bx plus c uh, equals to zero as a standard form equation. And the roots of that equation would be the solutions. So it would be x is equal to negative b plus the square root plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. That would be the roots of the quadratic equation in standard form. Okay, and if we were to draw a graph of the quadratic function, so if we were to have a function y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the roots would be, we would replace y with a zero in order to find the roots of that equation, and in any equation when we make y equal to zero, we are finding the x-intercepts of that graph. So, in other words, the roots, the solutions, and the x-intercepts are actually all the same thing, okay? They are all interchangeable terms that mean the same thing. Okay, so if we just have a closer look at how we would find the roots of a quadratic equation, we would use the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And when we solve that equation, one of three things would happen. We would either land up with two rational roots. Okay, so we would either land up with two rational roots. So that would be something, for example, if we had um, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 over 2. Okay, they would be rational roots because the square root of 4 is a perfect square and we can find the square root of 4 and get a rational number as our answer. The second thing that could happen is we could get irrational roots. Okay, so we could get irrational roots, and that would happen if what was underneath our square root sign was not a perfect square. For example, if it was something like the square root of 3, it would be irrational because we cannot find the square root of 3, so we would either have to leave our answer in third form, or we would have to convert to a decimal and round it off. Okay, so that would be an example of irrational roots. Another scenario could be that we get non-real roots, okay? So that happens when the square root part of the uh, third is a negative number. So for example, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 over 2. We are unable to find the square root of negative 3. It doesn't exist. And that means that the roots would be non-real for that equation. And a fourth possibility, and I know I mentioned there were only three, but a fourth possibility is we could get one equal root, okay? And that actually happens when your square root part is zero, plus or minus the square root of zero over two. Because if you think about it, the square root of zero is zero, so all you get left with is the negative two over two, and the plus minus falls away. So you get exactly one answer. You don't get the positive root option or the negative root option, because whether you add zero or minus zero, you get exactly the same answer. Okay, so those are the, the options that we can get for the roots of our equation. And if you just think about that equation, uh, the quadratic equation, the, the negative b over 2a part of the equation is always going to be rational. It doesn't matter what the values of b and 2a are. They're always going to be real and they're always going to be rational. The part of the equation that is going to result in the four different kinds of roots that you can get is actually this part of the equation, the b squared minus the 4ac. So we use that part of the quadratic equation to tell us what the nature of roots will be like. And we actually call that um, part of the equation the discriminant. Discriminate means to tell apart, to, to put things apart from each other. So the discriminant, and it's represented by a little triangle, is just the b squared minus 4ac part of the equation. And what that part of the equation will tell us is it will give us some information about the nature of the roots. So if the question hasn't asked me to find the roots, but it just wants me to tell them what the roots will be like, 
I'm going to use the discriminant. And you might hear me use another word for the triangle. It's sometimes referred to as delta. Okay, in the Everything Maths um, Grade 11 textbook, there is a table that summarizes the, the different options that you can get for your roots. I'm going to go through this table now, so if you would like to pause it at the end and um, make a note of this, you're welcome to. Otherwise, you can refer to the um, Everything Maths textbook. Okay, so as I mentioned, you get a couple of different scenarios where, to do with your roots. Let's take a look at when we get non-real roots. And we mentioned that that happens when the b squared minus 4ac part of your um, equation is negative. Okay, and the way that we write that mathematically is we say that delta is smaller than zero. A number that's smaller than zero is a negative number. If you think about it, all your negative numbers are less than zero on the number line. And so the moment your delta value is negative, you know that you're going to have non-real roots. And as a graph, what that means is that your graph will not cut through the x-axis. If that's your x-axis, if your a value is positive, if your graph smiles, it will lie above the x-axis. And if your a value is negative and your graph frowns, the graph will lie below the x-axis. So that's what it would look like if you were to draw the graph of the quadratic that had non-real roots. If your roots are real and equal, that means that your discriminant, your delta b squared minus 4ac, is exactly zero. Okay, and we, we'd mentioned that on the previous um, slide. And what that means is that your graph will only cut the x-axis in one place. It actually sits on the x-axis and it only has a single x-intercept instead of having two distinct x-intercepts. And then the final option is when we get real roots that are unequal. And that happens when your b squared minus 4ac is positive. And the way that we write that mathematically is to say that delta is bigger than zero. Okay, delta is bigger than zero. And if that happens, if your delta is bigger than zero, then you need to have a look at the actual value for delta. If your roots are rational, then delta is a perfect square. If your roots are irrational, then delta is not a perfect square. Okay, let's have a look at some examples where we apply this. Number A, we are looking at the graph of a parabola, and we can see that that graph has got two distinct places where it cuts through the x-axis. So that means because those roots exist, the roots will be real. We cannot say whether they're rational or irrational because they haven't given us any values. So here, we can only thing we can say about the roots is that they're real and that they, because there are two distinct roots, that they are unequal. You only get equal roots when you have one root of your equation, and you can clearly see here that there are two separate roots. In number B, they haven't given us a picture of what this, um, this graph looks like, so we need to find the value of the discriminant. The discriminant is just that part of the quadratic equation that is under the square root sign. So that will be 10 squared minus 4 times negative 2 times negative 18. And if you punch that into your calculator, you get negative 44. Okay, so therefore your discriminant is less than 0. And that means that our roots are non-real. Okay, the moment your discriminant is negative, you have non-real roots. Okay, there are some examples in your homework book, so please pause the video and try on your own. Number 1a, what is the nature of roots of the following quadratics? We look at our equation, and we see that they haven't given us the graph of this equation, so we need to first work out the value of our discriminant. Please just check before you find the discriminant that your equation is in standard form. It's the same as if you're using the quadratic formula. Your equation must be in standard form, otherwise you can't identify your a, your b, and your c values. So delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. So that's 6 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 24. And that gives you a value of 324. So therefore, delta is bigger than zero, it's positive. So therefore, the roots are real. Because 
it's positive and not zero, we know that they'll be unequal. The moment delta is a number other than zero and it's positive, it will be have unequal roots. And 324 is, um, is in fact a perfect square. The square root of 324 is 18, so that means that the roots will also be rational. Because if delta is a perfect square, then you get rational roots. So those roots are real, unequal, and rational. In number B, we are looking at a graph, and we can see that we've got only one root, so that root is real. The roots are real, and because it's only a single root, they are in, the two roots are in fact equal.